are you admiring my armband? Oh, it, it is beautiful, I know, because I made it. But don't get jealous, because I'm going to show you how to make one, too. Okay, all you need is yarn whatever color you feel like doing, some sort of contrasting bead. Um, I think I used 24 in this project, that'd be math. Have at least 30 ready to string on your project and make sure that it's big enough that it can fit on the yarn, like it has a big enough hole in the bead. And then you need an H crochet hook. You need snaps. Um, really, I guess you could use Velcro or buttons or whatever you felt like but snaps are what I used in this project and they make it really easy to open and close and you need a needle and thread in some sort of complementary color like white to white so that you don't see you know your sewing stuff later so and um, if you want to go print off the pattern to follow along there's a link in the description to go back to Modern Homemakers so before you crochet a single stitch, you've got to get these beads on the yarn. You can use a thick, um, like, curling type needle if you want, but I find you may have to lick it, but generally if you just kind of twist the end of the yarn, you'll be able to work that bead through as long as your beads are big enough. So once again, shoot for like 30 or so beads so that you've got some to spare. Um, just because it makes me comfortable to have that buffer. It's really hard to try to add them later. You don't want to have to unwind a whole ball of yarn just to add some beads on later. So once you're done with that, we'll move on to the next step. So we've got all of our beads fed on here. You're just going to kind of push them down and don't think about them. Keep them out of your way. Got our H crochet hook and we're going to go ahead and chain 15. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then we're going to skip these first two. So skip this one, skip this one, and we're going to go into the third from the end and do a single crochet. So one single crochet and we're going to work 13 total. So two, three, I'll come back when we get to the end. I'm going to go ahead and chain one and turn and then going in this first one we're going to do 13 single crochet across again. Now we're going to start getting a little more interesting. We're going to chain two, we're going to turn the whole project and we're going to do three double crochet in the same space. So one, two, three. Let's see my beads are starting to creep up on me so I'm going to slide them down. And then what we're going to do is skip three spaces. So one, two, three, skip. And then we're going to repeat that three times. So three double crochet in the same space. One, two, three. You can see we're creating just a nice little gap where you can have skin showing through your thing. So one, two, three, and then skip. One, two, three, and then do another one two, three, skip three, one, two, three, and then in this last space we're going to work four double crochet in the same space. So one, two, oops, got a little bit of that one, two, three, four. So that there you can see is very just repetitive. Now for our next thing we're going to chain two and we're going to do three double crochet in this space, like the space between here. And in the midst of the second one, so we just did one double crochet and we're going to go in and work half of this next double crochet and then we're going to work in a bead. So I brought one bead up here so I've done half of the, the double crochet and then I'm going to go and it just kind of works right in there and then I'm going to do one just plain double crochet right there. You can see how it just sits in the middle of that cluster 
And then we're going to go in this next space right here. Same thing. We're going to do a double crochet. Do half. So I'll, I'll do that again. Wrap around, go in, grab the thread, wrap around, go through two. So just halfway through that next double crochet, we're going to grab another bead. Just kind of work it down. Slide it down. And then that one is going to go in front too. And then one more double crochet, just regular. See how I just kind of pushed the bead to the side there? You tell that bead who's boss. Okay. And then we're going to do that um, in the next two spaces as well. So double crochet, half of a double crochet. And this is the basis of the whole project, being able to do this little bit with the bead. So push the bead to the side, one more double crochet. You can see we're almost there. We need one more bead. And that's going to be right over here. So in the second double crochet, grab a bead, work it in. Third. Like that. Woo! Okay, this next row, basically those two rows, we're going to repeat it 12 times. So we're just only going to put beads on one side though, because the last thing you want is this poking you in the wrist. Okay, I am done doing the beaded and the non-beaded rows. If you count, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six rows of the beads, and you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows without beads. So anyway, 13 total. Anyway, but I just wanted to show you the difference. Same crochet hook, same pattern. Just the thickness, the weight of the yarn, um, like this was a, a thinner yarn and this is just an acrylic yarn and make sure you know what look you're going for. I mean this is still cool, but I have to say I'm, I'm still partial to my original. I like the slightly narrower, so just make sure, you know, you might want to decrease one of the rows or just, you know, figure out which way you want it to be before you get started because I really do like this first one I made better and it was with a thinner yarn, but this is what it's going to look like with an acrylic yarn. It's just going to be bigger. So I've got those all in there. And the next step, if you look on this one, um, we are just getting something that we can sew our snaps to. Um, and it's basically based on your wrist size. So I have a pretty big wrist. So what I need, you know, to get my snaps around is going to be more than if you have a small wrist. So like test this right here. I mean, this is the bigger crochet hook. This is pretty close to where it needs to be just because the yarn was thicker. So anyway, so this next step, you make it as many rows or as few rows as you need. And it's simply just chaining one and doing um, 13 single crochet across. So, so in this original one, I did five rows, but I'm making this one for a friend. So I'm just going to do one or two rows because it's already so much bigger. So we'll come back in a second with that. Oops. I should have gone chain one, skip, and then in because it's looking wacky. Anyway, we'll be back in a second. I just can't decide how big to make this because I'm going to give it away. I only did two here and there was such a difference in the size of the yarn that actually looks like the five before. So I'm going to go ahead and take it down to just one row of extra so that it's smaller because she's got a smaller wrist. Anyway, and then we're going to go ahead and cut and tie that off. Crafts. It's always a challenge. It's always different. Okay. And then I won't make you watch me hide that. We'll do that later. But we're going to take our snaps and you figure out how you want to do it um, on the back side here. But you could have this be on top if you want to showcase that or you could have this be on top so your choice however you're going to do it have there you know pay attention when you take the snap off the thing but basically i'm going to sew it where that hole is exposed because that's where it snaps in and we're going to take our needle and thread And it just has these holes in there. I'm just gonna, I've got it knotted, this double thread, double knotted. And I'm gonna do, be careful when you pull. Um, I've broken several threads tying on snaps because it's just a really sharp metal. 
So I did like three and then I'm going to push the needle behind so I'm primed for the next spot and we're just working around the holes of this snap. Notice I use the same color thread so that you can't see if I don't feel like making my stitches beautiful it doesn't really matter you're not going to notice them. Pushing the needle behind again to get where the next hole is. Now I just did two snaps on the one but if you want it to not uh, pucker at all you could do one here, one in the middle, and then one on the end. Totally your choice. And then we're going to the last hole, so push it through. And then we're going to tie it off. I like to do everything twice, so twisting twice. Okay, so you do that the same for the next one or two if you're doing one in the middle as well. And then we're going to do the snap for the other side. So make sure the snap, you can see this is where it's raised, that's where it's going to go in. Line it up on the other side so that, you know, oh, I had it wrong. So we're going to put it here. So just pretend to close it and that way you don't have to use a seam ripper and sew those on. We'll come back when those are all sewn on. There it is. Once again the size of your yarn totally changes your project by like uh, an inch. <laughs> it's a big difference. And you choose two or three snaps and it's a really fast project. I hope you enjoy.